running the operation. But Doing a good job, too, by the way. Job. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable job, Joe. Yeah. I think you should have the job. I, I actually think you should have the job also. I don't know what we're waiting Chris, for. Hey, that's that gonna... all you need, buddy. Do you, do you think that's going to help? Just saying. Of course. You, might have you have no the... idea how much pull I have in this place. You can't even cash your own checks for me. What are you talking yeah, about? Right? I was, yeah. I'm giving money back to the company. <laughs> um, I'll start with you, Joe, and then I'll, I'll tell my story because when I came back to EEI, you were going through a real difficult time. Your dad was sick. You were trying to spend as much time as you possibly could with him because you knew it was a tough uh, situation. And um, I, I thought it was it was really uh, touching how you dealt with it. You were able to balance everything off because we were kind of altering this program dramatically here. Yep. Well, you and, were. Yeah, yeah, all I was trying to <laughs> yeah. put, you, put you down in your place, baby. Yeah. Put you in your place. Um, so maybe you can tell, tell, tell the story because... Uh, I'll tell you what, your, your dad had an awful lot of friends. I couldn't believe it going to that, uh, that memorial service that, and see it was an overflowing crowd. It was incredible. Yeah, my dad was the best, and it was such a good tribute to him when he passed this past March because so many people were there and so many people did love him. Um, but about a year ago, um, last May, they found uh, a little tumor in his hip, um, and we didn't really know what it was or what was going on. So they had a biopsy, and the three of us, along with my dad, we went in in June for an appointment a couple weeks say, later. Your, your sister Kathy is Kathy, here, and your mom yep, Paul is here mom. as well. Right. Yep. And uh, the doctor told us it was stage four lung cancer. And stage four is, is the worst diagnosis you could possibly get with that type of cancer. Um, it's treatable, but it's terminal. And since last year, a year ago, June, he, he battled that very courageously up until this past March where he passed away and it's one of those things where you never really think it's cancer is going to affect you or your family and, until it does and it just it's such a kick in the gut and I think that's why we do this radio telethon is I mean maybe if you're not affected right now you could be a year from now you Jim, know you know you you've um, you've been our producer for a while here obviously since I've been on the radio so but your involvement in this telethon, I would say the last four years, um, ever since Kevin was here, but you run this show. You have put this telethon on. I don't think people give you enough credit for what you've done. Um, it almost seems like now the motivation is, is it's amazing. I think your father would be proud yeah, of what this, you've done. This year is extra special. And, uh, you know, in, in the obituary for my dad, we, we asked people to put a donation under his name to the Jimmy Fund for the Radio Telethon, and we talk about all the people that came to his funeral. We, we collectively, his friends, family, loved ones, co-workers, you guys, um, we are donating $5,000 on behalf of my That's dad awesome. um, to the Radio Telethon. That is awesome. That really yeah. is great. That really is, Joe. And uh, Paul and, uh, and Kathy, that is awesome. Um, I'll tell you what, there, there were a lot of stories. That, that I had people that I had no idea who they were that are coming up. To, I'm going to the bathroom at one point, and some guy starts telling me a whole story about your dad, and it was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is but, there, it, but is there, you, you've been, you know, Joey's been working on it, and you guys, I guess, through just connected to him, have kind of probably learned a lot about it watching the telecasts. And I mean, did it prepare you at all for anything that you were about to go through? I don't think anything can prepare you for what you're about to go through. You you see it a lot, you hear about cancer a lot, but I feel like until you actually go through it on your own, you don't really know how much it can actually affect you and affect your family. Um, so I don't think anything could have prepared us, but I remember seeing my dad here last year, we all volunteered. and. I remember he was just so taken aback by the strength of all of the children that he saw here, too, with cancer. So that was a really special thing for all of us to experience together as well. So. That is awesome. And uh, 5000 bucks. We really yeah. appreciate yeah. it. Thank you very much. And, Joe, I will add on to what, uh, what Lou said. You do a great job with this thing. Thank Phenomenal you. job. And uh, so far, everything's running okay? Yeah, Train everything's running okay. Trains are running okay. on time. Everything's going everything's pretty well. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, in... I mean, you haven't even talked about, too, like, your cancer as well. Well, I, the, the funny thing is... That it, so we're going to have a moment of 
clarity and truth right now. I went to Hawaii. I told you for two okay. weeks. Well, let's well, let's end that joke for when now. When he first came yeah. back, yeah. You he were... was upset. He didn't have enough vacation yes, time. Yes, exactly. No. And, and Christian then was... Then we took it away from I him. was part of it. <laughs> and they gave it back. <laughs> That's a separate story. And they gave it back. We won't, we, won't, we won't give that to story. But it was interesting and it, it probably tough for Joe because he was going through the stuff with his dad and you know, I'm just uh, what, five weeks into it, and I have to call and say, I'm going to be out for a little bit of time. I was at, it was a normal day. I was at the uh, Patriots game, Pats and, and Jets, and uh, out of nowhere, I blacked out. I was feeling perfectly fine, had nothing, even 30 seconds in advance. I had no advanced knowledge. Boom, I blacked out. The EMTs got me back. I blacked out again. Uh, I did it two, three times. They sent me to Norwood Hospital. Finally, I transferred over to uh, Brigham and Women, and for three days, they thought I had a, a bleeding ulcer. Turns out that after doing a CAT scan, because they couldn't find anything in three days, they went in and found a large, just uh, cancerous tumor that was the size of a softball. I thought it was just fat. Uh, but apparently, <laughs> there, was, uh, there was another object in, inside of there. So they did an emergency procedure, a, a surgery within a matter of, uh, of hours on me because I was dropping a lot of blood. I ended up taking, I think, 12 units in, in 24, 48 hours. I was taking a lot of blood. And um, they took it out of me. Didn't think there was anything else in there, but you're never sure. And then I had to make the call a couple days later to Lisa Sherber saying, I need uh, I'm going to become a client, I think, over there at Dana-Farber. But And so I do regular treatment at Dana-Farber. I go and check on it to this point, knock on wood or whatever this is. Uh, the tumor's not come back. There's a chance it would come back for people that if it's a very rare tumor, that it would come back. The longer I go without it coming back, obviously the chances increase. But this is the great thing about the research that they're doing at Dana-Farber. They now have a pill. And a pill will literally shut off your system inside and tell this protein this tumor no longer to grow inside of you. I couldn't take it because they thought they had cleaned me out. They cut part of my intestine out, reattached it. They thought they got rid of everything. So it comes down to the point where we can't give you a pill if it's not fighting anything in there, because if you really need it down the road, it's not gonna be any good. You're gonna be immune to it, it won't work. So I literally have this pill waiting for me if this thing ever comes back and it gives me a really good feeling gives me a great feeling every three months when I go in there and I'm clean and I've been clean every three months. But if it does come back because of the unbelievable research and all of the money that's been raised over the years, they have come up with a pill. It's going to give me about a 90% chance of survival if that ever happens. And for anybody else out there that ever develops one of these just tumors and still has it somewhere in the system, this will literally shut the switch off and say, no, you're not to grow inside uh, somebody's system. Which is amazing, and you would think something like that 15 years ago wasn't possible. Wasn't and possible five years ago. Part of the reason why we're doing this is to make sure that things like that are possible yep. down the road.